What is going on all of you Sega dreamers out there in the world? I am Mega Amster. Thank you for watching this video. Whether you are a new or returning viewer, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. And today I am talking about uh, a game that I just played off stream. I actually did a uh, one off stream not that long ago for this, but I played a lot of it outside of stream uh, for the first time. And this is a classic Sega IP from the Sega Saturn era. This is Knights into dreams which i never played my first exposure with knights was in uh, sonic adventure the pinball level in casinoopolis they had the knight themed board i had no idea what it was as a kid i was just like oh look at this fun little love the music love like the purple aesthetic and all the different stuff there's a secret area you go into um which had like one of the capsules in this game so like yeah there was there was a i didn't really know anything right and i never grew up with this game because i was i was born in 97 i was born i think a year of this game came out 96 i believe originally i was born a year after this game came out i missed the Saturn era, but uh, it's a beloved game from fans, so I'm gonna kind of give my overall thoughts on my time with it so far. I put about 15 hours into a total, which is a good amount of time, probably more than I should have, because it really is not a long game. Um, to, uh, just to kind of summarize how, like, the length of it, it's really not long at all, but it's a very arcadey game. Like, there's a lot of replay, uh, excuse me, a lot of replayability with this one. You know, it's, there's no, like, super in-depth story, although the, the story is a little weird of this game and interesting. Um, but it's really meant to just be replayable, like give off that arcadey feel, which Sega and during this era nailed, which and they do here as well. Um, so we're gonna jump into it. Knights is the character you're seeing here, essentially, without like, I don't even know if I care about spoilers for this to be honest, but general gist is that there are these two kids, Claris and Elliot, I believe are their names. And essentially, they both kind of have their own struggles they're dealing with. Claris is trying to like rehearse for a play. Elliot is essentially, he's trying to like hit it up at the courts, play with the boys but he's not very good at basketball right and so essentially this whole idea is that oh like they're trying to from what i understand that the game is very loose about it i don't i haven't read the manual so definitely correct me uh, fans in the comments below if i get this wrong but from what i understand essentially like they're in the dream world and in the dream world they call upon knights to help like rescue these different orbs every level has these four different orbs you have to rescue as knights so you play as knights um there are a few moments where you do play as the kids but that comes usually later um and you're trying to essentially like beat the you rescue the dream world which then makes their i think it's supposed to essentially be an allegory for like you know fighting your inner demons and like fighting off your nightmares and letting your real dreams come true that is the cheesiness of it it's it's behind yuji naka and oshima san um fuck yuji naka oshima san did great with this but essentially yeah this is the version re-released on i have the steam version i don't know when it was released it was one of the remasters so it includes the remastered visual version as well as the original Sega Saturn version which is fun um and then some other stuff you unlock along the way so Christmas Nights is like a Christmas version of Nights it's literally only one level and then the Nighttopian collection I don't fully understand how it works if any of you have played this game have played this version specifically and know how this works let me know because in all these levels like there are these little creatures you get and I swear there are like there are these capsules these little purple and white egg looking things you see here when you can free them in the individual levels um, that you play as but like i swear like they keep every time i get another few of these they keep showing up with more and i thought i just have to find them all but new ones keep showing up so i don't really know how it works so let me know in the comments below how that i uh itopian collection thing works but we're gonna jump in here quickly with some uh just some gameplay i'll just do uh spring valley as claris here and maybe the first level as um uh, elliot as well each of them have four levels total so like i said it's really not a long game but it's meant to be very replayable this is the ideal Sega game is what that's saying. So yeah, you start off as the kids, you see these four orbs, the enemies kind of go to you and steal the orbs. And essentially you have four rounds in each level where you're trying to break open those capsules. Each one of those has the orbs they collected. Um, I'm gonna call them star orbs for now because I don't know what else they are. Um, but what you have to do is you have to go to knights here and then you can kind of speed into the level. So you can boost with A, a big thing here, which is interesting, it reminds me, I know this came out way after, but it reminds me of the side loop in Sonic Frontiers, where once you complete a full loop, you'll see that leading trail with knights. Um, you can circle around objects to draw them in. It's also useful for like certain attacks and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, and I found out very late into playing this, and you can do these little acrobatic tricks too, which I think just boosts up your score. Um, but they look cool when you do it with the triggers here. Um, I really just mainly use the boost and then circle enemies. You can grab on a certain stuff like this enemy here, grab on and flip it around. Um, and there are different collectibles in these levels. So the stars keep your combo going. A, a big part of that about this, if you want the higher ranks, 
think rakings in like Sonic games is you want to uh, collect stars, go through these hoops you'll see, and just like beat enemies and stuff. Now, what you're trying to do is collect these blue orbs to feed to the capsule here. And you can see here in the top left, there's a bit of a UI in terms of how many left you have and how many you currently have. So I have a little less, I'm, I'm a little over halfway with this, but a big thing is like trying to speed through these levels and really just get through them all, you know, and trying to uh, get as many points as you can. Because of course there's a timer as you can see in the top center there. And there we go, I did them all. So now the bonus time begins, the orbs turn gold and you can just go at it. Essentially, once you complete a capsule, you want to return to this goal right here. I'm not going to do it yet because I still have 30 seconds and I want to maximize getting as many points as possible, which I'm not good at this game, so I apologize for the gameplay here, although I have gotten into a good flow in certain levels. Um, I could take a look at my scores after, but like, a lot of it, it like, it, being a Sonic fan, like, I feel like it's, the gameplay translates very nicely here to where, I'm going to risk this a little bit, to where, like, oh, see, okay, here's a little capsule. Here's one of the Nitopian capsules. I don't know if that's going to affect myself later. But, you know, you want to maximize points, then return here, and you get a rank for each round you do. So I only got a C there, which was honestly not good. Um, and there, like I said, there are four, essentially, rounds per level, where the level layout changes. There are sometimes little gimmicks, like the wind gust blowing up there. Um, and, you know, there are different layouts to go through. And sometimes there are multiple paths, too, like in, for example, a Sonic game. Uh, but definitely, like, the Sega vibes are so here. Um, some of you who have, may have played uh, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed, you might recognize uh, this area specifically. Um, there are a couple of areas as well that it transitions through, but there is that Knight's uh, level. I don't know what this power-up does. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, but there are a few different power-ups you can collect in this game, too. Um, but essentially, yeah, there are... Uh, in the Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed level, based on Knights does take this level, as well as uh, one of the boss arenas, I believe. I can't think of anything else, but definitely let me know in the comments below if you know about anything else. Now, one thing I could see with this game, this is a really fun game. Like, I enjoy the core gameplay quite a bit now that I actually know what I'm doing. Um, and it's just, like, fun, simple, arcade fun. There's not a ton of depth here, necessarily. Like, I wish there were more levels, of course, but, like, it's just, it's, it's a fun time. It's a quick little game to blow through, and I can see why it's considered a Sega Classic. Now, one issue I could potentially see, and I'm already starting to feel it with this full screen here, because I actually played this game mostly on Steam Deck, and it honestly works pretty well. The optimization was pretty decent, and uh, I thought it worked pretty well as a, like, a handheld Steam Deck game. However, playing it full screen now, I'm realizing that, like, if you get any kind of, like, I don't usually get motion sickness with games unless it's, like, VR, but, ooh, I went there way too early. I bet. It's still gotta be, though. That did better than the last one, okay? Um where, you know, if you get any kind of motion sickness with games, I could see this maybe being an issue for you, because even I'm already getting, like, a little bit dizzy just looking at this full screen. Like I said, I was playing on Steam Deck before. Um, there are some of these bonus rounds here, where for maybe, like, five to ten seconds, you can do a bunch of loops here with the, the ribbon path here, and uh, pretty much get some extra points, so it's always good to score extra points there. But yeah, you always want to try to, like, explore and see what, like, rings you can fly through, too. Because, like, speeding through those, like, really is very satisfying. And it obviously boosts your score. I'm usually not a big, like, score person. But I find, like, actually going after the different, uh, the different types of, uh, like, loops here and everything. And, like, boosting up your score is just really fun in this game. I feel like it, the gameplay just, like, I, it's really fun. As a Sonic fan, I mean, it just, like, like I said, it translates well. So... I kind of hesitate to call it. I mean, I, technically, it's a 3D game. It's a little... It's because you're mostly playing on a 2D plane. There are some 3D segments at certain levels, though, which uh, get a little gimmicky, but they're not bad. Um, but I definitely prefer, like, this 2D style here. It just it feels really good to play. Um, I believe... Correct me, fans, in the comments if I'm wrong on this, but I believe this was the engine that Sonic Extreme was going to use. And then supposedly the story is Yuji Naka said, nah, that's our engine. And was like, okay, like, sure, bro. So I believe that was this engine they were gonna use for Sonic Extreme. Um, like think, I'm thinking of like the beta footage, footage for Sonic Extreme I've seen, I, I'm, it very, looks very much like this, but yeah. So this is, did I choose the remastered version? I'm pretty sure I did. Um, cause at first it was funny. Cause I was like playing the remastered version. I'm like, wait, does the, the Saturn version really looked worse than this, but it was like, yeah, it, it, it does. All right, so now I'm not gonna risk it too much. No! Oh, crap. Oh, I might have screwed this up. Hold on. It'd be close. Ah, uh, okay, so what happens is if you run out of time, 
Never mind. All right. Oh, wow. That was like worst case scenario. Okay, so what happens is when you run out of time in any of these rounds, you don't automatically lose. However, you change back into whatever kid you chose. And as, as soon as you hit the ground, you lose like all of your orbs. So the issue there was that I, yes, turned back to the kid and I still lost all my orbs, which is why I got an F ranking. So that was certainly less than ideal. I'm not doing a good job showing off this gameplay here. Um, but it's definitely pretty fun. I'm gonna do this level here. Honestly, I don't know if I'm gonna do another level. I wanna show off the boss as well. But yeah, this is the last round of this level. This is the fourth round. Um, the level of variety is pretty fun. Um, the first two for both Claris, which this is Spring Valley, and then I think it's Splash Garden as Elliot are, I'll be honest, like aesthetically pretty similar. But then some of the other ones are, I did that way too soon. Um, some of the other ones are a little more varied. Like there's a like a Western themed area. There's, it's kind of like a desert area almost, and like there's one section in it that's really tough where like, you're, it's essentially like a, like a nuclear bomb launching site where like you have to avoid a bunch of like missiles and stuff. So it's kind of crazy. Um, so here's an example of a boss fight. Most of these boss fights are in this kind of arena style here. In this one, I mean, some of the boss fights I'm confused on how you actually beat. Um, I just keep hitting him over and over and eventually it works, but I don't know if there's actually strategy. Here, I just grab onto his chin and just boost into him and eventually he'll die. Um, but there's some fun bosses in here. Um, some of you may be familiar, as well if you're familiar with Sonic and All-Star Racing Transform, there's uh, Riala in that game. is essentially like... I hesitate to say Shadow. I mean, I guess Rial is kind of like more like Shadow, but almost like Metal Sonic too. Like think of like the Sonic rival character um, in this game. So there's the boss. There's a few other bosses too. Um, and it's funny because for those of you who played Sonic Lost World on Wii U, there's also a lot of content in that game that's pulled from this. I, I'm trying to remember if it's just the boss fights or some of the boss. If anybody remembers, let me know in the comments below. I'm trying to remember because I, I, it's been a very long time since I played the Wii U version of that game. Um, there we go. C rank in Spring Valley, not my best. Um, maybe I'll check out another level with, uh, with Elliot. But yeah, and so of course you get like a ranking at the end. Um, this was the music specifically they had in the pinball level of Sonic Adventure, if anybody remembers that, but. Ooh, that's my worst run of Spring Valley. Not looking good. And then after you beat a level, they'll give you all these different hints. Um, and there is a final boss. What I will say is that like the final two dreams for both Claris and Elliot are like pretty much the exact same thing, which is kind of weird. Um, but yeah, each of them has four different dreams. In order to unlock the final area, you have to get an A, B, or C rank. If you get a D or F rank, you're locked out of it because it's that's considered like a failing rank for these. Um, but there's a bunch of different ones. There are some fun ones here. Let me do an Elliot level. I'm gonna do... No, this one I don't like. I'm gonna do this one. Oh, this is the snowy area, I think, yeah. I'm not gonna play the full thing since this video is already going on for quite a bit of time, just a little bit. Um, there's other achievements and stuff in this version, so this is definitely like the best version of Knights to Get, um, is the remastered version. Yeah. I've heard iffy things about the Wii game. There was Journey into Dreams on Wii. I still have not played that. I don't know if I'm really going to at this point, but I can tell why people love this game. This is definitely has that Sega Classics vibe. And when I was growing up, I always assumed, after I learned about this game, I always assumed it was a Dreamcast game. It just has that very much like Dreamcast vibe. But now I realize that's really just a Sega 3D vibe, you know? That's really not like a Dreamcast specific thing. Cause this was, the, this was before the Dreamcast, funnily enough. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a fun little version, but you know, having the original models to play as too is really fun. Um, but yeah, so, and like the aesthetic's great. The music's fantastic in this game. Um, soundtrack's phenomenal. I believe it's on streaming, I think. So if you want to go listen to it, feel free to, yeah, no, it definitely is. Good to, uh, go check it out on streaming platforms if you're interested. Um, but it's just really fun. Like the core gameplay is just, there's, there's a certain flow to it. I. If you've watched my channel before, you know I love games that have like a certain flow to them. And like this game nails that when you're like boosting and trying to go through as many rings in a row as possible and keep your link going. You know what I mean? It's very like, it's almost like a zen-like state. Some of the gimmicks can be a little frustrating because some of them, I can think of like the desert area, for example, has one that you're like locked into for like a solid like 30 seconds. And if you run out of time, you're just kind of screwed. Um, but I guess that's the risk you take with taking that, that path. Um, 
So yeah, there's definitely a lot to explore here and all different types of collectibles and just, I mean, it really is all just for like extending your combo, but it's just, it's really fun. You know, sometimes, especially in a lot of older games, like even before this generation, like the point system just like feels tacked on to me like a remnant of the arcades. But, and which it technically is in a game like this, but like the core flow of the gameplay is just so much fun for me to where like I just like really enjoy like just actually going after all the points and trying to stack them up and just going for it, you know? So it definitely is an enjoyable time. It's not the most amazing looking game. It's super colorful. You know, I appreciate the the uh, aesthetic for sure. All right, there we go. Oh, that was a new record. Oh, come on, not an A rank? All right. I'll do one more round here and then I'm gonna end the video because I definitely don't want it going on for too long. But, oh, here's a fun little gimmick. You can swing on these little poles here and really try to rack up your uh, your combo going on. But it's just, yeah, it's it's, it's a really fun vibe. It's Don't expect anything crazy. Um, I believe full price this, I think I looked it up. I believe it's 10 bucks. Currently, I know it's on Steam. I don't think it's on Switch thinking about it. Let me know if I'm wrong about that. I don't think it's on Switch, but like it's on Steam. I believe it's on Xbox. It might just be the 360 store, which I know is shutting down very soon. Um, I would hope it's on Series X. I've never checked, but it definitely is on Steam still. So definitely go check it out if you're interested. If you're a fan of like the 3D Sega IPs like I am, like I don't want to say you owe it to yourself to play this game, but like I think you'll really get a kick out of it. You know, it really is an enjoyable experience, and it's just if you like that arcadey experience, like Crazy Taxi, uh, I mean Jet Set Radio, even. And definitely, I mean, if you're a fan of Sonic, there is a lot of Sonic DNA here, considering you know Yuji Naka and um, Ashima san worked on this game. So definitely, if you're a fan of those types of games, I would I, I would recommend giving it a shot and seeing. You know, and then you can. You'll be able to tell right away if you like it or not, because it's—I mean—it's—it's it's pretty. The gameplay pretty much stays the same for most of it. But oh, I told him to get the capsule. There we go. Sometimes it's easy to miss certain stuff. That's why, like, I find like collecting the Nitobians was kind of a pain um, in certain stuff. But like, I don't know. If anybody knows about those Nitobian collections, definitely let me know, because I just—I can't seem to figure it out. But yeah, I'm gonna end it there. I think that's a good place to leave it off. Um, I don't want to exit the game. I just want to kind of. Well, actually, yeah, I've turned to the main menu. There we go. But that is pretty much going to do it for this video talking about Nights into Dreams. I know I'm not playing the original Saturn version, but I mean, the remastered version is a great way to jump in. So I would definitely, like I said, if you're a fan of Sega IPs, look into it, give it a shot, see what you think. And, uh, you know, it's <laughs> considering it's so cheap and it's such a short game, it's like, you know, you lose it. You don't lose out on too much if you don't end up liking it. But with that, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did, let me know in the comments below if you've played Nights before, what you think of it, if you like it, if you don't, um, or if you've never checked it out before. Maybe it's on your radar now. Now maybe you want to give it a shot. Um, definitely let me know what you think. But otherwise, I will see you all later. Thanks again for watching. Keep on dreaming. Dreams are big. Don't let your dreams be memes. Just do it.